He's one step closer to a Bigfoot encounter. It's a very tough task to find one of these things. I think we're the people who are going to find one, almost certainly. A paralyzed boy prays for death. It was definitely a ghost possessed. A supernatural light guides him home. I came back and I was a different man. Then, alien abduction. Could you be next? In the beginning, I thought I was going crazy. I know something has happened to me, but I was in extreme denial. And later, these people have seen a vision of their future lives. I was a little afraid the first time when I experienced my death in this life. Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. In business, competition and secrecy are par for the course. Well, the same holds true for paranormal investigators. That's a problem, especially for investigators in search of Bigfoot, who need to keep track of sightings and possible migration patterns. Now, one organization is trying to collect every report, footprint, and eyewitness account into one communal database. called the Bigfoot Research Project, headquartered here in the heart of Bigfoot country, the Cascade Mountains of the Pacific Northwest. For the first time, Sasquatch is online, and every possible sighting, noise, footprint, hair sample, and anecdote is being checked out, cross-referenced, and rechecked. Already, the computer analysis is paying off. This color film was shot by Roger Patterson in 1967. It has never been proven to be a hoax. These are footprints shot on videotape just weeks ago. They were discovered in the same area the Patterson footage was shot. And the size of the prints and the length of the stripe correspond exactly to the creature discovered 25 years earlier. One of the questions that arises is, um, when is one going to be found? There's no answer to that. Today, a week from now, 10 years from now, nobody knows. There are no guarantees. The way we're going with our project, which is a very sophisticated project, I think we're the people who are going to find one, almost certainly. The project is receiving grant money from the Academy of Applied Science in Boston, Massachusetts. This prestigious institution believes Peter Byrne deserves a chance to bring one in alive. It's not easy. It's a very tough task to find one of these things. We're dealing with something which is uh, shy and elusive, very wary of man which has an enormous area to live in and to hide in, and um, it's not going to be found easily. While Sightings was shooting this interview, a call came in to the project. Independent eyewitnesses were reporting something moving at the base of Mount Hood. Byrne's team responded immediately. They're clearly visible, and they definitely are primates of some kind. They are walking upright, and they're moving fairly fast. And the time we've been here, they've moved about 200 yards, maybe 250 yards. Analysis identified the two lower dark areas as rocks. Above these rocks, two shapes were moving at approximately two miles an hour. There were no reports of hikers at that time, but the distance was too great to confirm this as a Bigfoot sighting. It will be used to corroborate any other sightings in the same area. Photographs like this one come in every day, but Byrne quickly rules out all but a very few. This is a fake footprint. It's very square. You can see the line of the toes across the top here. It's simply straight, which is wrong. They should be angled. And then the sides are dead straight. And it's recognizable as a fake footprint, probably made with a, a wooden mold of some kind. This is an important videotape the Bigfoot Research Project is concentrating on right now. It's from Northern California. And uh, it's from uh, late last year. And the, the photographers say that in here, in the, in the center of the picture there, just there. The dark area? The dark area. You can see something, and you can see something moving. Independent Bigfoot researchers Scott Harriet and Daryl Owen captured these images in Northern California. It was their first face-to-face -face encounter with an elusive creature they've been tracking for 10 years. I can see him pointing at something. After about 29 seconds, he then lowered the camera, looked at me, 
and started crying. I mean, he literally had a little minor break, started crying and said, let's get out of here. I was very scared at that point as well. We went down the hill. I'm crying at this moment, so excuse my voice. It's right here. You can see it. Okay. The footage has been analyzed at Wonder Film Design. Here, advanced computer enhancement technology allows researchers to take a closer look. Right here would be the head and the arm down this way. And let me rock back and forth here. And as you can see, that it, it's, it's something right there is moving while everything else in the picture stays static. There is something unusual moving in the thick woods of the Cascade Range. But the Bigfoot Research Project remains cautious in their optimism. Hoaxes are rampant in a field where film and videotape are considered still the best evidence. Especially in the 1960s and 70s, it seemed like everyone with a fur suit and a lot of spare time was coming up with supposedly authentic photographic evidence. Only a few pieces of photographic evidence have deserved serious attention. But even these compelling images aren't enough to satisfy scientists. I have to say that I'm a skeptic regarding the, uh, the Sasquatch. It would probably be, if we were able to verify its existence, the most exciting biological find of the century. Until we find physical evidence that's uh, indisputable, I think that all scientists have to take a, uh, a rather pessimistic view as to its existence. Wildlife biologist John Bindernagel is one scientist who no longer shares the pessimistic view of his mainstream colleagues. I was very slow, uh, very slow to come out of the closet, very slow to talk about this. I was concerned about my employability. Biologists weren't really accepting this as a, an actual animal. So I still remain very quiet. And I'm not sure why in the end I came out. I guess, I guess I found in the last few years, talking to people, that people weren't as disbelieving as they used to be. One reason may be the overwhelming number of anomalous tracks recently sighted in Washington State. Down through here, it's, here's a heel spot right here, about three to four inch wide here. Comes up across, and here's a toe down through here. In this area. In this particular area, there, there are two that are hanging in this area here. They've been here for better than a year now that they've had people who have seen them. Skeptical scientists put Bigfoot into the same mythological creature category as leprechauns, fairies, and gnomes. But Bigfoot researchers ask, when was the last time you saw color film of a leprechaun? Have you ever seen the footprints of a gnome? Well, of course not. Bigfoot is different, they insist. He's out there somewhere, and finding him is just a matter of timing, patience, and luck. You would think that every inch of the Pacific Northwest would have been scoured by now, but since 1948, over 50 airplanes have crashed in Washington State, never to be seen again. If large reflective metal craft have remained undetected for as long as 50 years, perhaps it's not so far-fetched that researchers have yet... The following program